Do you know the most efficient speed for your Tesla? Stick around as I uncover the truth and reveal the optimal speed for getting the most out of your Tesla. All right, welcome back to the channel. Dan here from Nord Tesla, where I dive deep into all things Tesla. Today, I have an exciting video for you that will shed light on a topic every Tesla owner wants to know, efficiency at different speeds. Now, you don't need some YouTube video to tell you that driving at a slower speed will net you more range. And I don't want to hear in the comments how I never go 65, that's ridiculous. And it's a Tesla, you should be driving fast. Yes, I know all of that. Most people will drive what they want to drive. This is just a test to show exactly what kind of results you can expect. And if you're on a road trip, spoiler alert, it may be important. Now, what I'm gonna do is crunch those numbers and let you know what's the ideal speed to save you on range and time. So get ready for some eye-opening results. So a bit about my testing methods. It's not scientific by any stretch of the imagination. I didn't do a closed course loop with set variables cause that's not how we drive. There's so many things that affect range from of course speed, but also elevation, weather, traffic. So there's really no point in doing a controlled test cause in the real world, it's not controlled. So these are real world numbers that you might see while you're driving your Tesla. So I drove two different higher routes, six times each, at 65 miles per hour, 70 miles per hour, and 77 miles per hour. I'm Canadian, so that's a more common 105, 115, and 125 kilometers per hour. So this is what I set the autopilot at, not necessarily what I was driving. It would fluctuate due to other cars on the road, but I drove early in the morning and again late at night to avoid most of that traffic, but it's, sometimes it's unavoidable. Let's kick things off by examining the efficiency of driving your Tesla at 65 miles per hour. So at 65 miles per hour, my watts per mile was 210. The first drive of a 46 miles was an average of 44 minutes and a second 50 mile drive averaged 47 minutes. You will get the most range at this point. There's no question that. There's a reason the car will tell you to keep it under a certain speed, which is usually 65 when range becomes an issue and you need to reach your destination. But is it truly the most efficient speed in terms of drive saving you time and range? Now let's ramp up the speed and see how a Tesla performs at 70 miles per hour. This is a common speed limit on highways and kind of around the range where most people drive, but does it come at the cost of reduced efficiency? At 70 miles per hour, my watt per mile was 240. Uh, my first drive of 46 miles was an average of 40 minutes and a second 50 mile drive averaged 44 minutes. All right, buckle up because things are about to get interesting. In this final segment, we're pushing the boundaries by testing Tesla's efficiency at 77 miles per hour or 125 kilometers per hour. Will this higher speed significantly impact range or will it be a minor difference? At 77 miles per hour, my watts per mile was 261. My first drive of 46 miles averaged 38 minutes, while my second 50 mile drive averaged 41 minutes. So in terms of individual drives, I'd save four minutes going 70 miles an hour and six minutes going 77 miles per hour. Not earth shattering in the least, I know. Uh, on individual drives, it doesn't really make much of a difference. Where the difference comes is over long distances and the results may have you rethinking your driving habits. Well, I won't give it all away here. I will say that the optimal speed for efficiency might surprise you. So make sure to watch until the end to get the full picture and make the most out of your Tesla road trips. When I combine all four drives together, I kind of get in the ballpark of what a full charge would get me in my standard range plus model three or real wheel drive model three. So it's a good number to use for a road trip scenario. Driving at a modest 65 miles per hour, my average speed was actually 64 which is not much of a difference. I used a total of 41 kilowatts and it took 181 minutes to drive those 194 miles. Driving at what I'd say is an average for most people 70 miles per hour, my average speed was 69, also very close. I used a total of 46 kilowatts and it took 167 minutes to drive 194 miles. Now, if you have a heavy foot and driving 77 miles per hour, my average speed was 73.6. You can tell there's a bit of a difference there. I used a total of 50 kilowatts and it took 158 minutes to drive 194 miles. Now, one thing that should stand out here is the discrepancy between set speed and average speed. Well, when you're going faster than the flow of traffic, 
you kind of have to slow down sometimes because you're inevitably going to run into slower cars and have to get out of their way and try to move around them. So that's where that happens. So let's take a close look at the data and what you're sacrificing by going a little faster. Now, when you're going 65 miles per hour, it definitely is the slowest, but I only use 41 kilowatts. So I could theoretically drive an extra 66 miles on that last 14 kilowatts. At 70 miles per hour, I could have gone only 37 miles and driving at 77 miles per hour, I'd only have 18 miles left in the battery. So that's a bit of a difference. So like I said earlier, I wasn't strictly looking at range when you factor in the kind of time factor as well, going 70 would save you 14 minutes and accelerating to 77 would save you 23 minutes. But the other thing to consider with time is charging time. Because if you're going on a trip, it's kind of important. The biggest factor is what kind of charger are you using at your destination? If you're going a level two charger, then those extra nine kilowatts that you use going 77 miles per hour will take over an hour to make back up. So that 23 minutes isn't so hot now, is it? It's a different story, of course, if you are using a supercharger, because then you're only looking about two to four minutes at most, so it's irrelevant. But as we know, superchargers aren't always directly on your route. Sometimes you have to take a few minutes down the road. Uh, so if you factor that time in, it kind of eats up into your 23 minutes. So you're not saving that much. So what's the better speed? Well, it depends on your scenario. You will have to judge, will driving a slower speed allow me to either get to my destination without having to charge at all, which is great, or perhaps get to a further or more convenient charging location. So when you're driving, if range is becoming an issue, your car will actually tell you to slow down and say, hey, you gotta stay below a certain speed to be able to reach your destination. So if you're in that situation, you definitely wanna slow down. So if range isn't an issue, then I'd recommend going with the flow of traffic. Now you can tell my test at 77 miles per hour that my average speed was a lot lower, like five miles per hour lower, because I'm having to go around slower cars. And all that is going to eat into your range and battery for really not much benefit. Uh, and it's a lot safer going a little slower. So. I definitely recommend going around 70 or so. That's probably the best bet. But like I said, go with flow of traffic so you're not, you're not slowing down speed. If you're joining me today, until next time, drive safe, drive electric, and keep pushing the boundaries of efficiency. Uh, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And also don't forget to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you get videos every week. Tons of awesome Tesla content, uh, how-tos like this one, efficiency tests, uh, how-tos, tips, tricks, uh, reviews, all that kind of stuff. Also check out my merch store, I get t-shirts like this one just down below here. Check them out today, all right? So again, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. Five miles per hour, my watts, uh, watt, at 65 miles per hour, my watt hours. So when I combine in all four drives, I get the, in the, a little bit uh, off the beaten path. Probably will get you slower cars. Just to keep on that region breaking.